Hi, I'm Torstein from Cinema Terror, and today I'm reviewing the Mexican slasher film Hell's Trap, or Trampa Infernal in its original language. We start off Hell's Trap getting to know the two rivals, for some reason, Maurizio and Nacho. After an intense round of a game of paintball, Maurizio gets the idea of them going out to the woods to see which of them will be able to hunt down a bear who is rumored to have killed off human beings in the recent past. ¿De qué se trata? Mira Alejandra, se trata de esto. El que llegue a matar al oso será el ganador. No le sigas el juego, Nacho. Todo esto es una estupidez. Oye, oye, oye. ¿Y cuándo acá tú decides por él, Alejandra? ¿Que no tiene pantalones? When a group of seven people head out to the woods, they do not come across a big bear, but rather a ruthless killer who does not approve of others trespassing in his area. Hell's Trap is an interesting film in some ways. It starts out with a regular slasher film tropes of a group of young people heading out to the woods, ignoring the warnings of an elderly man, and then finding themselves being hunted by a masked murderer. For some reason though, they didn't go full on horror, but rather included guns and machine guns to the mix. The killer is actually an American ex-soldier, with no supernatural abilities or clear motivations, and when he's not satisfied by using his Freddy Krueger ripoff glove, he also takes advantage of the benefits that weapons like guns, machine guns and grenades bring to the table. It's funny how it's actually a mixture of the three most popular horror villains of the 80s, with the already mentioned Freddy glove, the mask which can resemble a Mike Myers mask, and the fact that he lurks around in the woods like Jason Voorhees. The odd mixture of horror and action doesn't work in Hell's Trap, and it left me wondering why they went with this choice in the first place. If you're going to have a masked serial killer hunting down people in the woods, then why even worry about adding action elements? Odd choice, and I would have preferred it if they stuck with either making Hell's Trap into a pure horror film or a straight action movie. The little we get to know about the characters also doesn't do much to set them up. Maurizio and Nacho are rivals for some reason, even though it is never explained at all. And the only thing else that we get to know about him is that Maurizio is supposedly the bad guy, and Nacho has an excellent 80s mullet going for him. Of course all of the decisions they make during the film is completely moronic. At one point they even had a chance to escape as they are all in the car and they can just drive on home, but no. They figure it is much better option to stop and hunt down the murderer. Which records leaving one of the girls alone in the car. I bet you can guess what happens to her character next. The film is kind in that it's only 75 minutes long. In at that short running time, it does feel like it is dragging itself towards the end. There are a few dead scenes, but there is mostly blood spatter and little gore to be enjoyed. For exploitation fans, I should also mention that no, there is neither any nudity to be found and enjoyed either. Hellstrap is a poor film, there is no denying that. But even though it is bad, it did manage to keep some interest in me, as it was an odd film and it felt a bit new or exotic due to it being a Mexican production. It is not a film I would recommend you to hunt down, even if you might be into finding hidden gems from different countries. Hellstrap gets a low score of 2 out of 5. Have you seen Hellstrap before? What did you think of it? Any other South American 80s genre movies that you would want to recommend me checking out? Let me know about it in the comment section below, like, subscribe, patreon me and all of that, and I hope to see you again next time. Thank you for watching.